What is going on, guys? It's your boys, Jake and Zach from The Journey Podcast. Just want to let you know, this episode is an absolute banger. It's certainly our biggest guest ever. We had the pleasure of having Bob Menery on, obviously a household name. He's interviewed people from the likes of Mike Tyson, Shaq, Donald Trump. And this is our first official sponsored episode. Shout out to Evermore Alkaline Water. While you're here, hit that like, comment, subscribe. Yeah, biggest guest yet, absolute banger. Thank you guys so much for clicking on this video. Enjoy. Bro, thanks for doing this. You're a lot better looking than I'd like to be. Yeah. 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 Adderall took me down massively. I think the night before I checked into that facility, probably took about 25 pills. You know, the whole Nelk situation, I'll stand my ground. I was an amazing fucking partner with the Nelk boys. Amazing partner. And it sucks that I lost my best friend. Kyle's my best, best buddy. We worked so well together because we pushed each other so fucking hard. Who's the biggest influencer woman you've been with? Listen, if we're either going to do this one of two ways, either I'm going to say who it is, but I think that it's... What's going on, y'all? Welcome back to The Journey Podcast. Hit that subscribe, like, comment, do all, all of that. This episode is brought to you by Evermore Alkaline Water. I'm joined by Cousin Jake. Oh, hello. How you doing we there? We have a very special guest in the building, in Instagram comedian, internet personality the host of the ripper magoo podcast six foot eight most, good looking <laughs> most hated man on the internet i guess maybe i don't know fuck bob menery good to have bob uh good fucking to, menery good to be here guys this is uh i drove down from cape cod my mother and father drove me down here and uh did a quick shift put my shit in a uh suitcase and i'm going back to the cape to go catch some more great white sharks and uh Bought some sneakers from this great little sneaker store that we're in right now. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to La Tienda. La Tienda. La Tienda. Yeah. La Tienda. Yeah. Um, yeah, our guy Jared Martino connected us with uh, Gabby. and uh, Very we're running gun. We're fucking running and gunning. You yeah. know what I'm saying? That, that, that's what we do. What but, do you mean running and gunning? Uh, we've just been like, we have the saying, bro, um, we never lose. It's yeah. just like, bro, I'm not going to sit here and say that we're like the most successful guys in any means. Uh, but I, I think it's just because we weren't given the real platform to be successful in life. We've been successful in so many things outside of like business. And why weren't fame. you given the real platform? Well, because like we were playing a different game. Like, bro, like my favorite saying right now is play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Okay. Uh, I was playing Division One football. He was playing college basketball. So that was a great game. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I learned but a that lot. That game ended. Yeah. Yeah, it has an end, bro. I'm a fucking six foot two Italian guy, bro. My ancestors were probably fucking picking grapes or some shit. You know? Yeah, like, yeah. I'm not fucking with you. Don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, I have guys that'll hopefully do that if anything. Pushes yeah. The shove, you know. Exactly. No, 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 no. We're here. We're, we're actually really grateful that you're on the show. Uh, I'm gonna go out here, say it, give you your flowers, bro. Yeah. Thank you. Um, yeah. Thank you for coming on the episode, bro. You're our biggest, biggest guest yet. Um, I know before. I don't know. Someone said something about you know you be you being on like a little bit of a downtrend. Um, oh, who said that? I don't know. <laughs> I feel like you said that. Nice. I don't know. Someone, someone, someone said that. one of my self-sabotage moments? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I guess I think that I look at it this way. It's like, I mean, it's just perspective. It's like, you know, you look at it two ways. It's like, all right, my most important thing is mentally, right? Where I am mentally. Okay. And so if you want to say that, okay, in the public eye, does it look like we're on a downtrend? I don't know. Separation from the number one show in the world. Uh, you know, horrifying it, you know, recent experience that took place, tr some traumatic shit. Uh, with your ex-girlfriend? With Yeah, I mean, again, I don't want to be a pussy. Like, dude, like, I'm not a pussy, but there was a lot more involved in that whole entire situation that people don't know about and stuff like that. It was just a lot, and, like, it doesn't matter. Like, everybody is affected differently. That's the thing. Like, okay, cool, call me a pussy. I mean, first of all, I don't give a fuck. It does not phase me. But at the end of the day, it's like everybody's affected differently by different things. Yeah. Plain and simple, right? I mean, we're not all built the same. Yeah. That shit fucked me up. And, bro, as a man, that shit hurts. I don't care. You could be as tough and big, as strong as you want. When a girl fucks you over and you were very caring and loving to her, that shit fucks you up. I don't want to say, like, I mean, look, mistakes were made on both ends. You know, I'm so sick and tired of talking about it. I just went through. I mean, it literally put me in the fucking loony bin. Mm. Like, that shit fucking on top of some other shit that I was doing. But, um, yeah, I mean, dude, I, like, when you say trending down... Depends how you want to look at it, because a lot of people don't know some of the ventures that I have going on behind the scenes. A lot of the people don't know where my, you know, stuff that I have that I'm doing that you guys don't understand that, you know, I have a pretty fucking smart brain on me. You know, I've been able to build this thing from zero to what I have now and be involved in all these people. And I'm pretty fucking connected. Mm -hmm. Like I have I have a play and I know what that play is. 
for sure. So it's yeah. like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm a dangerous man when I'm fucking focused. Yeah. I love that. And that's that's the thing with me is just to get that refocus back. And yeah. it doesn't matter what the fuck you're going through. It's like sometimes, you know, the human brain is not supposed to process this much attention and views on like your life and all that shit and it's just it's not it's not you're not supposed to the human brain's not supposed to be able to handle that yeah and that's what i'm in so sometimes it's okay to be like you know what i don't give a fuck fear of judgment or anything i'm taking a step back now you can do it privately and be smart unlike me yeah or you right. can do it publicly but the reason why i do it publicly is because i sit in the dms I feel like I'm running for office. <laughs> <laughs> like, I sit in the DMs and I listen to each and every one of you out there. No, and I sit there and I talk to people and I know the struggles that people go through and I hear them because, bro, not everybody lives that Jake Paul fucking life. That fucking, uh, the, all the, what you see. Like, not everybody fucking lives that. Yes. Nobody fucking lives that. So, like, I want to bring people through the raw shit in my life and I've lost so much money so many sponsors mm. and so much because of it but I'm just, it goes back to just me being wanting to be raw and authentic as much as I possibly can. Yeah. That's just my style. Yeah. That's and what I, makes you you though. That's, that's what why makes you're Bob Menery Bob, Bob Menery. That's what makes Bob Menery Bob Menery. Yeah. You never fucking know what the fuck's gonna come on that internet. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I love that. Cause to me it's like it's uh fearlessness. And I think it's the only real way to do it. I think that you probably could have played things a little bit safer. Um, like, you know, he was telling me about you had a Super Bowl commercial about to air and you went on the night before and you you fucked it up, you know, and I uh, I'm gonna fix that story, but continue on. But I feel yeah, like what ha you said something about well, well, missionary. Let me, let me let me let me let me roll let me roll into it. But yeah. I just feel like outside looking in, like throw bro, some I, haymakers at me. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know <laughs> what I'm saying, bro? No, because I, I I I know you. I know you only from what I've seen of you on the internet. And well, what's like, your opinion? Um. And don't be don't be a pussy. You're six yeah. foot two. You can kick the shit out of me at any time. <laughs> no, bro. I think that I think that you're. I think that you're just like us, bro, to be honest with you. And like what I mean by just like us is that there's no PR team in your corner. You don't have this coach. You don't have this person. It's almost like life is your coach. And I understand like that sounds like me like trying to give you like flowers or whatever. But like, bro, I can just see it like outside looking in like, yo, you're a loose cannon. You're fucking you're a talented motherfucker. Right. You know how to navigate throughout life bro i feel the exact same way like i've made like my own connections like on a small level and like we're still continuing to do so we got you on the fucking episode and mm -hmm. um but um with you i just feel like there's there's a it's almost like it's bro, almost like it's straightforward it's I'm almost not... like in serial killers bro how like they don't Jesus, have that's a fucking <laughs> <laughs> holy fuck yeah. right, go ahead well, all right let's go mr dahmer's waiting for you to hear from you <laughs> Well, no, I'm saying what I'm saying is that those guys, I don't know, they they have a smaller pituitary gland or they have okay. a small like like their judgment. There's something that stops them before doing certain things. And it feel and it seems like you don't have that thing in your brain. Like, bro, if you're going to do something, you're just going to do it. It's like it's like uh, impulse control. Impulse control is, is isn't isn't I'm not going to say, well, yeah, it's not that great. But the cool thing about that is that we talk about the shit all the time. Like, bro, our podcast is really about personal development and like self-help. So I don't want you to really yeah. think that like we're corny if we're talking about this shit. Brother, you two people sitting across a chair will never phase me. Yeah. Nobody's saying shit will ever phase me. I mean, yeah. it, yes, does it rattle your mental a little bit? Uh, it did for a certain amount of time, but I've been in this game for a while. I've yeah. been doing this for seven years, you know, and have, like you said, been very outspoken and gone to like nuclear World War Three against powerful fucking people with powerful backings mm -hmm. behind them for the right reasons, um, just to stand my ground and you know stand up for what I believe in. But also at the same time, you know, like like I said, there's a time to, there's a time you got to pull back a little bit, you know. And I'm just, you learn along the way, bro. I'm, I mean, I'm in, I'm an old dude, man. I'm like I'm 30 fucking six years old. I'm old as fuck. I didn't have my break till I was 28 years old. Wow. I mean, I was 28 years old, homeless in a car. I don't want to tell a story as many times as I've told it because it's kind of it gets repetitive. Yeah. But again, I, it's a new platform. Yeah. But you know, I was sleeping in a car at 28 with like nothing and high on crystal meth and just hallucinating and thinking people were chasing me and thinking fucking crazy ass shit was going down and to look at the progress that I made, that's what I always kind of constantly remind myself is that, you know, look how where I took it from, you know, let's avoid going back there. Yeah, basically. Yeah. You know? And that and that wasn't me like trying to like shit on you It's more so me just saying like, it's cool. I want you to shit on me. It, well, it's cooler the lifestyle you're living because we talk about it all the time. 
what's a cooler book? The book where the guy has the nine to five, the, the wife from his hometown, you know, plays it safe, mortgage, whatever. Or where you're fucking Bob Mennery and you're fucking pissing this person off and doing this thing right. And then you're at the fucking top, then you're at the bottom, then you're, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's a cooler, that's a cooler mm -hmm. life yeah. to me. And I think that, um, yeah, I mean, bro, you're, make, you're making a, you're making a real splash, bro. It's fucking, it's pretty crazy to think about what you've done as a, an internet personality. Like, bro, like you're pretty much a household name. I'm a, you know, and I, I ran a lot of it. I did a lot of it. Just, it was all, I'm, you know, I like to be, my, my main flaw was one of my biggest things. And I think what's, it's a mix of trust. You know, I always had a fear of trust. Like as you get developed in this business, as you guys get bigger and you grow bigger, you're going to have, you know, say you guys fucking do an interview with Kanye tomorrow. Mm -hmm. It blows up the fucking internet, right? Everybody's fucking, you know, how many sharks come out of the woodwork for you real quick. And guess what? You have to sit there now and fucking have to wait and, and, and say, oh, oh, this guy, this guy, oh, this guy, but he's good. He knows him. He knows it. And you're getting pressured so much. Like that's what it's been. So my trust went away. Okay. And, um, yeah, I mean, basically, like, I'm very old school, you know, and, and you learn, though, along the way when there's so much money involved with different projects and different stuff, shit gets real, like, lawyer shit, legal shit, like, fucking, it's, I, I mean, it's almost at a point where it's like, you know, I, I do miss the days of caddying. I miss the days <laughs> of, like, carrying golf bags and just fucking slugging bags and, like, you know... I mean, first of all, I was in, I looked better than you did. <laughs> I, 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 I was a it. fucking SEAL Team 6 <laughs> member, basically. I, yeah. it, yeah. I had two bags on each shoulder every fucking morning. I'd be there at 5 in the morning at the caddy yard. And there's a lot of people who can relate to this. There's a lot of caddies that obviously caddy throughout the yeah. whole entire uh, world. Two bags on each shoulder. I'd show up at 5 a.m. I was a minority, you know, being a white boy in a caddy yard. Not too many of them. In, in Los Angeles, like, there really isn't. And so it was like a prison yard when I walked in. You got the Mexican guys over there. You got the El Salvadorians. You got the fucking, uh, you know, whatever. And I would get there at 5 a.m. every fucking day. And I would do cocaine before every fucking, <laughs> before every fucking round. Good idea. So I was, like, ahead of the ball. Yeah. And I was like, you, like, like, nobody had to wait. There was no waiting. Like, you, you got, you got <laughs> right. your golf clubs on time. Yeah. You know, you and get ahead pretty quick doing that. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but no, I, I, you know, you go, I go back to, you know, you, like you said, the ups and downs of just this whole entire journey. I'd say I'm on like year eight now yeah. of just doing all this stuff. Money doesn't really motivate me that much. I don't care about making a fucking turn into this into Portnoy Empire. Maybe that would change if somebody was like, all right. But like, dude, I'm like, just, I just like to just fucking, I like mental peace. That's my most important thing is just having mental peace, you know? Like back going back to just the whole fucking so many people come, and I can't change it now. I can't get out of it. The only option way to get out of it is just to quit the game. Yeah. And that's it. I yeah. know that I'm so I have to now make adjustments to be like, all right, I know that my brain is gonna keep getting opinions thrown at me. I know that I'm gonna keep getting fucking people talking shit. I know that I'm gonna keep like it doesn't it doesn't phase me anymore, but at the same time, you know, certain subjects that do come up that piss me the fuck off. Right. I wanted to uh I'm reading this book and it talks about like the, the things that are put in your life and God or the universe, whatever you believe in, will continue to bring those things to surface and put them in your life, either people or situations until you learn from them, until you make the change to outgrow that. In your life, do you feel like these things keep recurring, right? Like battling addiction or getting yourself in certain situations. Like, mm -hmm. is it at the point now where you're like, okay, like I'm done with this shit and it's time to time to learn from it adderall took me down massively adderall took me down that was which is the funniest thing in the world i was talking to john my buddy and we did this like pod about it and he's like yeah dude i think like you're the only one probably checking in for just like adderall <laughs> like yeah. people, people take this for like math tests <laughs> right but i just couldn't stop you know and whenever i got in this dark space this dark cloud i just used to pop that stuff so you know kind of back to your back to your question is i think there's a lot of things that people look at that i've been outspoken about that I've been right about, and I, I I could have been a pussy and not taken a stand and been vocal about, mm. you know the whole Nelk situation. I'll stand my ground, you know I'll stand my ground on that. I was an amazing fucking partner with the Nelk boys, amazing partner. I brought them a lot, a lot of value. Yeah. I brought them from st from day one to present day, you know. And there was just some some speed bumps along the way. Do I regret going to social media? I've said it before. Yeah, because now they can have a counterclaim if they want one. If we're gonna take it down that road. You know, and so it's just basically, but there are, there are situations where, you know, if I had been a little bit, you know, not had such the addiction with that stuff, I think that, that this course of this story would have been a little bit different. Mm -hmm.
what 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 did they do to you? What did the Adderall do to you? Like like why like how did how did uh, you take I could jump in, on the moon, land on two feet, and then jump back down? No, I mean it just dude. I mean, have you ever taken Adderall? I have not. Have you ever taken Adderall? Yeah, of course. Yeah, <laughs> it's like <laughs> perfect. So uh, I mean, he could obviously tell you that. Is it's I mean, it's a, first of all Adderall. If I think taken in, I don't even think if taken in the right way is right. Because people will get pissed at me for saying this, like, oh, my kid has ADHD. It's like, yeah, all right, well, it's a very addicting thing. Because, you know, even if you have an addicting, you know, it's like any other medication. You want more and more and more because your body just fucking crazy, wants more and more crazy, and more crazy. Yeah. For me, you look at a guy who, you know, hasn't done the blow shit or anything. I've never done any other fucking drug in my life besides the Coke, the one time for the crystal meth by mistake, which made me hallucinate at 28 years old in the back of that car, which was the night when I went home and became... Famous, like two, not famous, but like internet known two weeks later in Boston. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's just a super charge and yeah. it just gets you fucking just, you're so social. Nothing you can do, like, like the difference of this, like late night posting, or say, for instance, like that really probably wouldn't happen as heavy if that wasn't in my system. Mm. Like when I was going ape shit on the internet yeah. against my, you know, former chick or from you know the Nelk yeah, shit, right. but you know that 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 firepower is still there. But that, what it does is it just enhances it. It makes you whatever, and then you take one, then you take two. I think the night before I checked into that facility, I probably took about twenty five pills. Jeez. Jesus, what was the objective? milligram? What was the objective? Yeah, self destruction. Just didn't care about anything. I can relate to that. That's yeah. like a man, that's a manly thing. Like I, bro, I've I've been drunk at three in the morning on my motorcycle, going 120 miles per hour. Yeah, you can't be doing just that. Just cause fuck it, you know. Like, yeah, you can't be doing that shit. And then and it's too. It's and when I say 25, I'm not talking like 25. I'd be fucking dead. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm yeah. saying spaced over a three or four day period, bro. and just like when I showed up to that facility, bro, I was like fucking, you know, fucking gone mentally everywhere. And this was just recently. You know? Yeah, talk about that. Talk about your experience in there with therapy and like and the, and, and what you got out of it. So this is it's actually well, before, yeah. before we go into that, I, I want I want to dive a little deeper on like when you say when you say self destruction, um, what were you trying to get? Like, don't you know? Like, is that dangerous to take twenty five pills? Like, what were you trying to get out of? You just say like, I, I don't yeah, know. yeah. But I knew my body could tolerate it because yeah. I knew that mm -hmm. the, based on the history of what I've taken, you know, when I was taking shit. Uh, I knew my body could handle it, but it was also spread out over time, and the milligram dosage was different every time. Like it was like a five milligrammer, and then it was a, I'd, I'd have like a little half a thirty milligrammer, and then I'd like you know, and then and then and I was just pouring vodka down my throat and whatever. I told the people in therapy, I said I'll never stop drinking. Like drinking was never my issue. Yeah, I could function extremely well. Like I can, I, I'm not going to live this life where I'm sitting at a football game with a glass of water. Yeah. I'm sorry, everybody in AA and all that shit. <laughs> love you. Great job. Great work. <laughs> I can fucking sit there with a the fucking, and I can have five or six beers and be okay. Yeah. yeah. My main, that that was the only thing that fucking took me down. Wow. And are you feeling like, like before you actually physically take the, because bro, I, I struggle with addiction as well. Everybody struggles with some type of fucking addiction. It's a matter of how far they take it or like what addictions are like worse than others. But I'm saying like, before you physically take that pill, are you thinking like, fuck, I'm going to do it again. And then you do it. And then you have another opportunity to stop and then you do it again. Like, what are you thinking before you actually take the pill? I'm thinking... Depends. There's many different variables. If I was in like work mode, like at 3 a.m. when I was like, I need, I want to. I've talked about it. Like when I want to get that the president of the United States on. Like <laughs> Steve's in a hotel room with me and these chicks, and I'm like everybody out. You know, that's where I take it in a positive way, mm. and I wouldn't take as many. But when it was like something that really affected me, there was just no rules. Yeah, it was just fucking boom. Just fucking sending boom. it. You could use whatever terminology you want, but I was, <laughs> you know, I was taking fucking. And then just didn't even care. I didn't wow. care. Wow. And it wasn't like a suicidal thing. Like, I've never been suicidal. I love my life. I love who I am. And I know there's a lot of, like, you know, it was just more of just, like, I don't give a fuck about anything right now. Wow. Plain and yeah. simple. And and so so what was the thing? Like, why do you think you got there? Like, what is, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you, obviously, you had you had a tough coming I had a, up. I had, a, I had a serious addiction. Yeah. So addiction. that was it, right? It was just an addiction. Yeah. So once so you had, started, then. I mean, I have an addictive personality to everything. Mm. I'm, just, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an action city. I'm a fucking I, like, I want to go Even though I was a pussy during it I want to go chase a tornado I want to go see great white sharks I want to I mean I would never skydive though Me either Fuck that Fuck shit Fuck that He wants to do it He said, he said that's going to be one of our bets That like if I lose He's going to make me skydive Not doing it I don't know how much you could pay me to do it I don't think I would ever I don't think any amount No Me either 
this podcast would end. I would I would end this podcast before I fucking skydive. <laughs> no shit. Yeah, I just couldn't do it. But I do. I like. I, I'm an adrenaline seeker, obviously, in a sense, in certain ways. But I, I was battling a real addiction that I needed to take care of, and it's embarrassing. You know, it's not. You know, you're 36 years old. It's like get your shit together, bro. Yeah. What the fuck you doing? Yeah. You know, and then all the eyes are watching you, and they're not even. Fun. They're, they're, they're. It's like the car crash on the side of the road, right? You know, they're they're gonna watch. They're gonna look right. to see the body, but they don't really want to see it. Yeah. You know what I mean? So then. Um, you checked into rehab? Um, <clears throat> so the story is this. Uh, I ended up going to... I was up for three days straight. I was just firing off on the internet at somebody. And uh, just not even thinking and not in a clear headspace. And I f- forgot that I had to do this obligation at the speaking panel in Chicago um, with my buddy. And, uh, you know, he reminded me, but when you're in that state of mind, you just don't even, like, fucking care like i don't give a fuck sorry dude i mean it's like i don't i didn't go outside and make eye contact with people wow. i didn't go outside for a month bro like i stayed indoors pretty much for like a fucking month and i mean obviously to go out to like pop over to one little place to have a quick beer or something like that but then I'd, I'd be like right back because mm-hmm. when i when i go places people fucking know me yeah. mm-hmm. right so what happened was i'm driving to the airport i'm driving to chicago i am driving i'm getting on a plane to go to chicago and i walk to the airport and this is three days no sleep, about to go into a speaking panel. <laughs> like, n- not going to probably end well. Yeah. But I was still going because I'm still like, I, I have functioned in that state of mind before. And then I walk in and I just, you know, right away I forget that I put out to the millions of people my life, you know, in that state of mind. And people start coming up to me. Hey, you all right? You want a picture pit? And I was just like, fuck this. Yeah. I fucking bounced. I got an Uber. Um... My Uber app wasn't working at the time. So I called my buddy LJ, who produces this purple banter stuff, which she's uh, working on that company. And I fucking just beelined at home. And then Shane, this guy, reached out from this treatment facility. And he was like, Bob, we got you. Like, get in this fucking Uber and come see us. You're all good. We're going to get you the best fucking help possible. We know you got a busy schedule. And he fucking just got me an Uber. And during the time when I was in the Uber... I was having massive panic attacks, and I was getting driven by. He he chose a great Uber, by the right. way. It's a 90-year-old man, by Perfect. the way. 90-year-old man with a mask on, <laughs> driving, yeah. driving 50 miles per hour. I called 911 <laughs> seven times along the way. I called 911 seven times. Why? Because I thought I was dying. Oh. <laughs> Damn. I thought I was dying, so I'd have him pull over. This is a 90-year-old being like, mm, across the highway. And how far is this drive? This is, that was the thing. It was I like, thought you meant like he was in, this 90 year old was going to give you wisdom, not like oh, he no, was going to make your situation worse. No, he was he was like, I don't even I, I feel bad. I don't even know. The guy deserves like the fucking Nobel Peace Prize or something. <laughs> drive drive yeah. me in that fucking car. Yeah. I would have had him pull over every 15 minutes. I'd walk out of the car and take deep breaths, fucking whatever, get back in the car. And then finally, an hour and 27 minutes was the ride, which is just horrifying to look at when you I know, like it was just fucking. And I'm looking, I'm sitting there. Staring at that clock like, oh, my God, fuck this shit. So I arrive at the treatment center, and then uh, they just fucking take you right in. They do all the blood tests. You piss in a cup. What's in your system? You know, we know you're going on through this stuff. This is the therapist you'll be sitting with. Here's some food. Fucking eat. This is your house. You're by yourself. We got the best doctors, the best therapists for you. It's a hope by the sea was the place. It was a f- great fucking job they did. And they... And Chad came and talked to me and said, I know this will be like an expedited program. You can stay as long as you want, but we're going to fucking have people around you 24-7. And I was in this house having the best doctors and the best fucking therapists and the best people working on me. And, you know, everybody always says to me, like, five days, is that enough? Like, is that enough time to fucking change? I'll tell you what, man, I'm never, ever, ever fucking taking that shit again. So they did a pretty good job in five days. Wow. I'll say that right now. So It was also probably coupled with, like, your, your disdain for it. Like, I... I've heard some things about addiction. Like, how do you like how do you stop taking drugs when you stop putting it in your mouth? Like, it's that simple, right? But like, the only way to get to that place is like you have to get so fucking goddamn sick of it. I feel like maybe that a couple with a little bit of that as well. I mean, relapse. I mean, what those treatment facilities are very successful for one reason, one reason only. You don't walk in once and not come back. There's not a lot of them, right? But there's also not a lot of people that have done what I've done in my life. You know, so like I know that I ain't going back there. Yeah. I mean, I love the place. It was great. I highly recommend therapy. Like highly recommend going to it. Did I will g- plug the place too. Hope by the Sea. Yeah. It's fucking amazing. Fucking Orange County. Really fucking really really and the addicts mentality I think too is like 
you, and then I'll let you guys have your show back yeah, here. Course, yeah. But I think the addict's mentality is basically along the lines of, you know, there's so many different stages you go through, and just don't be a pussy because you're not a pussy, but just get help. It's not like go and get help. Don't be afraid to reach out and get help. I have so many people that have now came to me that I'm now sitting back and trying to fucking, you know, do everything I can. But, like, get help. You're not a pussy for going to a therapist. You're not a pussy for going to fucking, you know. I do agree with some of the things Andrew Tate says about chicks and shit like that. I do agree with some of the, you know. I also disagree with a lot of what Andrew Tate says about different shit. But, like, get help. You know, you don't have to have this alpha male mentality all the time. Trust me, I've been an alpha male for a fucking long time. But I've also been a pussy f- once in a while. It's okay. Um, I've obviously, I've been following you for a while. I, I've made a list, me, Jake and I in Miami, we made a list of all of our, of our guests that we wanted to have on. We wrote our top 10 guests that we personally wanted to have on for us. You were one of them. So I've been following you for a long time. I'm super into everything you post. I know everything that's going on. Amazing. That's my favorite type of people to sit with. There you go. Here we are. And that's why I'd sit with you for five hours if you want. By the way, the longest podcast ever. That would be something where you guys could do I that. saw you talk about that. I don't know how many buys happens, whatever that show was. Yeah, yeah it was at 38 hours or something like 38 that. 38 hours. You guys could break that. <laughs> Try to do a 38 hours. Be the first ones to do it. Go to like tomorrow and break the longest podcast ever. Well, you know what we got to do? We got to go to a wedding place like you guys did and just fucking crash a bunch of weddings. Just have it set up and everybody can just come everyone in. Just everyone sit in. Uh, yeah. That'd be actually that'd be great, fun. actually. That's a great idea. Yeah. My brain just went there creatively. You yeah. guys should go and crash a random wedding. Be like, can we set up a podcast yeah. there? And yeah. just have every guest in for 38 right. hours and break we'll the record. Just have strippers during midnight, the <laughs> sure. midnight hours. No, that's yeah, the celebration after. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. strippers. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So, obviously, I was getting into... I, I've heard you say that a thousand times. What in this therapy, in, this, in these five days, brought you to the point where you're like, okay, this is the last fucking straw? Because I let something outside affect who I was in such a drastic way? Um, that's a good question. I mean, I think that's a good question. I think that's a... that's Because that, I've great, seen you say it all the time. Yeah, that's I'm a, never touching these zaps again. Fuck yeah, these zaps. Yeah, exactly. I'm off of it. I mean, I guess you're just going to have to just... Just wait and see. Wait and but see. But I can see, like, right now, like, I've watched your last couple pods before that. You seem in a different mental space. Your eyes look different. Just the way you're speaking, the way you're carrying yourself, you seem more like you're in control. That's what help does for you, you know? Like, I mean, I, I will continue to do the therapy shit. I'll continue to do all that stuff. But that's a great question, though. Like, you've said it a thousand times. Consistency is a problem with me. It has been a con- problem with me. Start a project and don't finish it. Start a project and don't finish it. I think that comes routed from my childhood, too. I think a little bit, too, of, like, you know, I was a little bit spoiled growing up. Like, not money-wise. We came from basically the hood in Lawrence. So, like, you know, Lawrence Mass, I think we're all aware what Lawrence Mass is. <laughs> Uh, uh, the, we're not. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> right, so it's like probably it's like the roughest probably place in Massachusetts. I think really? You, yeah, yeah, I think Lawrence is up there. Yeah, definitely wow. number one probably. Roughest place. We were very, very, you know, low income growing up. And I think that I was very spoiled by my mother. And so like, you know, when I it goes back to like I think my childhood, and she's an amazing woman, but even like going back from like taking your plate off the table and putting it in the fucking dishwasher and washing your own dish and fucking doing that shit, you know, like finishing a project. I think it it stems from at least that's what the therapy stuff to said as well, you know. But there's pros and cons to that, like not yeah. finishing tasks. Mm-hmm. I think it stems from the childhood a little bit too. Wow. What's something you learn in therapy, right? Like what, like if I go to because there's physical therapy and physical mm-hmm. therapy only works if you do the exercises at home. It's not like you go because I have a fucking terrible back injury from college football, and I can tell you that I've never once went seen someone. They've given me an ex. They they've worked on me for a couple hours, and I was magically healed. Like mm-hmm. th- it works because you do shit at home. Like what what were, are there exercises they've given you? Like just depends how much you want to put into it. I mean that's that's all that matters in the therapy. It depends. It's on you. It's on you to see how much you want to put into it. I mean, do you gonna you gonna just you gotta commit yourself. You gotta really just fucking come clean. You gotta not be afraid of the person you're sitting across the table from. And you gotta tell them and talk to them. You gotta really let shit off your chest and really not like. Because what's funny is. What happens is you get a little bit like it's it's like, all right, this is a fucking stranger. I'm telling her I killed three people. You know, it's like, yeah. okay. <laughs> yeah. like you know, you know, it's like it's like, you know, you, you're, you're telling them just your darkest secrets and to sit across from a stranger. That's not comfortable. Like, again, back to that, the human brain. That, that's not comfortable for somebody to do. The shield goes up. It's what you put into it. I mean, and, and I that's something like even without my relationships and whatnot. I mean, I immediately like couples therapy is important. I mean, I was dating my girl for three, two, two and a half years. Like we were serious. Like we had a wedding ring buffer or we had like some, wow. we were really into it, you know? And so like, I, 
Therapy is important. That's my that's my thing. I'm just I really do think it's okay to talk. To, I don't think enough people talk to people, you know. And that's 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 just that. I don't know. Yeah. Mm. One what thing. You so, you said before that um, if you could trade, if you can go fucking be a caddy again, you would. And the thing you value, I mean, something along those lines. And the thing you value the most in the world is peace of mind. And this type of career doesn't produce peace of mind. Where where do you do with that? I think this career does and can produce peace of mind. I think it just needs to be fucking just for me specifically with Adderall. Like it goes back to that. But I think that it's the the peace of mind thing is just and and I back to your point about me going back and being a caddy. Mm -hmm. Realistically, if I have a button right now, do I press it? Probably not. But I'm not. You know, I I I I I, I I'd have no problem with it if I went back there. You know what I mean? Um, I don't know. I kind of just forgot your question. The question was the question was really just saying like, you know, all right. So if I'm fucking running a race and I know the race doesn't make me happy, do I fucking stop running the race or do I continue running the race? If you're running a race, you know the race doesn't make you happy. I'm giving you a riddle. I'm sorry. But no, but I'm trying that. to see in my head, in my brain, I'm trying to figure out the riddle. Uh, yeah, I think that. Uh, it, you know, I think you got to finish the race. I think I've came here for a mission. I think I came here for to do. I have goals set in my mind that I still even, you know, just no personal goals that I still haven't achieved yet that I need to and I want to. So I'm gonna keep running the race. The race is not ended yet. So I think that's uh, plain and simple. I don't think I'm gonna ever be one of those people that will ever just kind of <sighs> lean over, start breathing heavy, and jump on the other side of the ropes and quit the race. Yeah. You know, that's just me. I mean, yeah. I'm in it now. I'm too fucking deep in it. You know, and I know that I can kind of manage perfectly with the right, you know, mindset to get just mentally happy and mentally focused in business in order, you know, to fucking be able to produce it at the highest level. I really mm -hmm. do. I mean, I believe I'm one of the best in the fucking world. I do it at, at, at podcasting. And I think it's, it's a, it, I really do. I believe that I'm fucking one of the best interviewers in the fucking world. And that's, I'll say that right there. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of people in the comments section right now that will say, Bob, you're fucking terrible. <laughs> okay. But this is my baby. This is what I love to do. I love to talk to people. Yeah. Yeah, no. Um, and that, that's kind of what I, I wanted to dive into. Uh, obviously, you are a part of Full Send podcast. Mm -hmm. um, what the fuck happened? Because you were, you were to me, you were the fucking show. You were the show. Me you, as you, well. You kept the really? show fucking yeah. running. Well, that means a lot to me. I think that there was a lot of elements to it. I think that they provided the... I think that it's like this. It's like It's like... I think that the show's a lot different now. I think that there, I, when me and Kyle were working together at the at the level we were, like we were so so OCD, competitive, obsessive, compulsive about just making sure we got the best next episode possible. That and I would stay on top of Kyle when he had to do some shit. I would be like, "Yo, let's go! Like we got to get AB, we got to get fucking so and so. You know, we got to get it right. He just took his shirt off. Let's fucking get AB, <laughs> right? Like, like, yeah. let, let, let's, let's get let's get let's get the fucking president." And Kyle would be like, "Bob, like let's fucking focus. Get up fucking in the morning." Like we were just on it together. We had a great one-two duo, and that's why we produced some great stuff. And John Shahidi provided some great guests too, with you know Snoop Dogg and Mike Tyson, yeah. some great episodes. We all worked really good. The synergy was great. What happened was the the transparency was the issue, and. Um, you know, for me, I always told those guys, I was like, bro, just, you know, let me do my shit. I know you're pranksters. Don't fuck with me. Just let me be me. Let me just perform. Let me fucking do my thing. Zap, not zap. Just I'll, I'll fucking, I'll be there. I'll show up. I'm going to perform. And, uh, yeah, I think that there was just, I think it's just the transparency is the best way to put it. I think just, uh, you know, I think the financial stuff, you know, I think that they're, they're a little just not too transparent about certain stuff. Um, I mean, they were an up and coming business. I think John, believe it or not, as much as fucking John, fuck you, but love you, <laughs> lo love you at the end of the day. You know, you fucking dickhead. But you know, I mean, I think that they just could have been a lot more transparent. They're sharks, dude. They are. I mean, John Sheedy's a shark. I'll give him credit all the credit in the world. As much as I'll, I'll always be upfront and honest, he's a fucking shark. And uh, I'm somebody who just relies on your word, and you learn to change that. And you know, and I, I relied on their word, and they didn't live up to it. Yeah. In certain aspects. Yeah. Yeah. No. And th and that's what I was saying. Where I was like, I just felt like I felt like you carried that show in a sense where you just said, 
I'm a podcaster. I love speaking to people. Best those in the guys world. are those guys are content creators. They're not podcasters. And I'm fucking connected. That's the thing. Exactly. I'm connected. And and I remember seeing the lists. I remember I don't know who what was true, what wasn't. I remember Kyle posted a list of who Bob actually got, who they got, mm-hmm. and then you came out and said who you got. I think once you build a show and it's like I mean, I think either way, if they had launched that show, like I my thing with them was this, and, and this was kind of before John came involved was when I talked to Kyle is my goal was like, dude, I'm super connected with like powerhouse motherfuckers, you know, like really, really powerful people, mainstream people that like will be like, you guys are pranksters, like dressing up as transgender fucking people or something or dressing in fucking whatever and going into stores and doing all this shit. Like I'm, I, my goal for you is to, I want to, I want to make this work because I want to offer some mainstream motherfuckers to you Mm -hmm. and I want to get you on ESPN I want to get you on Sports Center. Right. I want to get you on all that shit that I have access to, you know. And so that was our kind of our agreement. They were just launching the seltzer at the time. The Happy Day was a big issue. Happy Day was a big issue. You know, you can't, you can't, you can't look me in the eye and tell me I'm a big part of this thing. And then guess what? I walked away with, with Happy Dad. Zero. Yeah. All right. Zero. And I pushed the fuck out of Happy Dad for them. Yeah. And, but they gave me their word, and that word was not good. And that's simple. But that comes back down to well, Bob, you need more infrastructure. You need better fucking. You know, you need to have people in place in your corner, and that's that. Mm. You know, and then that's plain and simple. Happy Dad was the big thing too, and like you know, when you're getting the, the ad revenue and all the ad percentages and stuff like that, like what does it matter if you're only just promoting your own products in a yeah. sense? And we have no piece of it. <laughs> that's when the money gets big and it becomes whatever. But I mean, I think we had if we had continued that show the way it was, we were on a very good path. They're already good. I mean, they're going to make hundreds of millions of dollars off that fucking shit, I think. You know, because Kyle's a genius. John's a fucking genius. Sammy's genius. They're a very smart team, and I think that they're they're going to do just fine. Yeah. I just think if, if Bob stays on that show, they're up there in, like, the top five podcasts in the world up there. Rogan. I think they already are, though, right now. Yeah, yeah. I think they're yeah already up there. but I'm saying in a sense of, like, Every single like every single person in the world fucking knows the Joe Rogan experience. I wouldn't allow them to have fucking John Summit on that fucking show. Yeah, what was right. that? I wouldn't allow them to have fucking. I think because they're getting lazy. I think that they 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 don't they know they're rich. They know they're rich now. They're like fuck, like they they know they're gonna be rich, and they are rich. And like and like I have nothing against John Summit. John Summit yeah. is a great. I mean, he dropped one comment on me about some, like just like oh like sent me some DM. Like just while I was like down bad, and he's like, "Man, you're down bad, ha ha ha." Like I'm like, "Bro, who the fuck? Does? Like you're oh, fuck that you're guy a down. fucking dick, bro. Like don't fucking like whatever. Like that's not a good thing to say to somebody. A man doesn't do that to another man. That's fucking you know. So like, but like also I wouldn't allow like some uh, like some of your episodes like that's just, me and Kyle wouldn't have ran that way. We would have had fucking who is it? I would have had Kim Kardashian and fucking. Tom Brady's dating Kim. Let's go get Kim. We would have been fucking. Let's go get. Tom, let's go get Brady. Let's fucking go get. You know, yeah. that was that hunger we had. And that's what I, I, I miss because now it's like, you know, the start over. I have to start everything over again. I used a lot of resources on them. But they also provide a lot of resources for me, too. So it's it's just both ways. Yeah. That's basically it. It's just it was a, uh, And it sucks that I lost my best friend. Kyle's my best, best buddy. We worked so well together because we pushed each other so fucking hard. You know? Could if there you ever could go, be? A, yeah, if you, uh, we're yeah. thinking the same. We think alike. If you could go back and uh, there was no, an opportunity I, to come back, would you? Would I go back on the show? Absolutely, I would. Of course, I would. It's my baby that I built from the fucking ground up with that fucking dude. Of course, I would go back to it. But let's settle up. Like, let's just settle up. Let's do the right thing. Keep your word. You gave me your word. Keep your word. Have and you spoke to them? It's a lot of it's just all through legal now. I really? can't. Yeah, and I tried to side text Kyle because, you know, I worked so. I mean, me, me, and my my guy that was working with me at the time we were very 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 like nice for months and months and months about transparency and um they it would, they would play a little game they would go kyle back to john john back to sammy sammy back to kyle talk to kyle have john and look at dude like i said i don't want to trash these guys yeah, anymore like that's just business yeah and that's what you learn i'm like an old school fucking handshake dude which makes me a fucking idiot you know what i mean but um like i mean i was in i was in another deal that i did where like you know it didn't perform as well for these people but i'm like i'm a dog i will fight for you for life until you guys fucking make that back yeah. you know and so yeah i mean that's basically that 
Now you get me all in the fucking my head about shit. (laughs) (laughs) I used to sat up. I can tell you got into it. (laughs) No, I could tell. I mean, like, I I didn't, I don't know, like, how much, uh, again, like, I know you said before the episode we could speak about anything. Bro, you can talk about anything the fuck you want. Yeah. Never edit an episode. With, With Nelk, how do you, like, let's say we become this big thing, right? And then sharks come in. How do we protect ourselves? Is, isn't there no way to protect yourself because you're just a fucking tadpole and the Shahidis are like these fucking, bro, like they're masters of business. Yeah, they're like, masters of business. What they do. Um, man, it's a great question because I haven't done it right. Um, I wouldn't take my advice on that topic. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I yeah, would go yeah, elsewhere yeah. for that topic. I think, I think, but bro, like that's kind of what I'm saying is like, I don't, and I'm not like, do you have any regret with that whole shit? Do you feel regret? None whatsoever. Yeah, and I thought uh, the only thing is that I have regret on is I think this, I think it gives them. Hmm, gotta be real careful with this one. Yeah. I think that if uh, I hadn't gone on to the internet in such an aggressive way, I think based on you know certain contracts and whatnot, you know there was things that I did wrong by going to the internet. So um, yeah. that's my one regret. I think if I had kept my mouth shut. And not gone to the internet, but we also fucking like behind the scenes are working for fucking four months to try and resolve this. Like, just like, you know, just take care of your fucking dudes or have your back. That's it. And it's just like it it really comes down to they brought in Bob Menery knowing who the fuck Bob Menery is. I mean, we had a we had a really successful show before that, bro. We were not. I mean, you know, but I also but maybe it goes back to that. Like we had problems with Kevin Conley, too, you know, but it was there was but it tells you that when the money's in the line, it's like. There's a lot, of, lot at stakes, but Kevin now are Kevin and I are now boys. Like Kevin and I are fine and, and all that stuff. Like you know, I hope that me and Kyle are great after all this shit. It's like, I hope that we. I don't. I do not see. I think because their operation is now being led by the Shahidis. I think that and and I think that Kyle is a smart man, but he needed some help in certain areas. I think that's where John came in, and I don't think that they they would ever allow that. Especially, I mean, after all we've been through and yeah. bashing and whatever. But Kyle and I have texted. Uh, we took like a four month break, and then I sent him a really, you know, nice text. And I think that he said, "Let's just stick to the course of where we're at right now with, uh, with, yeah, with what they're doing, with just you know, no, not with what they're doing, with mm. just legal, oh, with legal, yeah, yeah, yeah okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, it's kind of like which uh, I've never, you know, I never sued anybody in my life. I don't want to sue anybody." I don't want to fucking sue somebody. It's messy. It sucks. It's not a good thing. It's not a good thing. It's not a good situation to be in. Mm. You know, like boys should be able to figure this shit out. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just fucking costly. It's 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 ridiculous. It's dumping money Mm -hmm. down the toilet. You know, but they have heavier ammo than I do. Yeah. They have a lot heavier back than I am. I'm a solo fucking fish in this fucking pond right now. You know. So I mean, the decision is on me basically at the end of the day of how I want to move forward with these guys and you know. I'll probably end up just saying, you know what? I don't know. I have no idea how I will fucking how I'll handle it. So I'll say this. But we do have a, I do I can't I don't know, man, it sucks cuz I don't know what I can say legally, but I do have a great story. Maybe it maybe it might come. Maybe it'll come out. It's a great mediation story. Oh, really? but I don't think I could talk about it, but I don't know. I'll text during the interview and see if I can talk about it. Okay. Cool. cool. Yeah. 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 Okay, yeah I'll send good. the lawyer the text right now Thank and you. see Appreciate if I can talk that. about it. No, cuz I love I, I want to help you. Thank you, bro. All right, let's Thank see. You. Yeah, I have a, I have a nice little uh, point. I'll keep going. I mean, I'm uh, texting something. just the, the yeah, yeah yeah. So I, I this is just... gonna be a very fucking just f- crazy episode of just random shit. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Right. So um, set the stage. Uh, six months ago, twenty five, twenty five. Uh, best friend since eight years old. I was the center. He was the quarterback. Hand on my hand right here. You were the center. I was the I quarterback. Was, I was the center. He was the quarterback. Oh, I was gonna say, did you get catch some disease or something? Made you lose like <laughs> called Jakey Fever. You got, wait, That's Tom, what he Tom, got. Tom, Tom, Tom Hanks in Philadelphia over here. <laughs> <laughs> he fucking caught AIDS and he's yeah. fucking lost whatever. <laughs> All right, you're good. Go so ahead. best friends, small town, normal life, right? The San Anthony's and went off college sports. Blah blah blah. Um. I went through my own little bout with anxiety. I think that leveled me up a lot in life because I had to learn a lot of lessons that would protect me from all this shit. Like I, bro, I meditate, I read, I journal, I go for walks, I wow. fucking speak to I'm him. I'm envious of you. Yeah, it's it's good shit. I can even tell you about some shit after this. Like, bro, I'm, I'm pretty wa- I'm pretty wise there because honestly, bro, 
four years ago, I thought I was going to die for like a three month period, like hospitalized. Panic attacks. Panic attacks. Oh, amazing. Yeah, terrible anxiety. Yeah, like crippling. Yeah, worse. but but um, bro, I was able to manage it, and nothing against people that take antidepressants. I'm all for whatever works. I just think if you throw off B, you throw off C, D, E, F. You know what I'm saying? Like it's mm -hmm. a long thing that you throw off. So, um. I, I don't I was just someone especially when I played football bro I had all these types of drugs in my system and cortisone trying to get back on the field all legal oh legal legal, yeah, legal yeah, like all, no like street legal okay. but I just didn't I just didn't uh, antidepressants first of all I didn't even fucking believe in anxiety like that's just the truth I I, I didn't have anxiety until this point in my life because I just had like a nice life you mm -hmm. know my my parents you know gave me a nice life yeah, and shit then, hits the fan that causes that yeah once shit once shit hit the fan um. Division one athlete, worked my ass off through junior college, like trying to get Put a everything into it. Yeah. Got to Missouri State, uh, playing Oklahoma State on Fox Sports One. I'm a fucking basically a team captain, bro. Like I'm the guy. Like, I'm gonna fucking walk. Yeah, I'm not out. letting you near my girlfriend, that's for sure. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or, or former or anyone near it. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, man, end, ended up injuring my spine, like, bro, like my calf, whatever. Ended up injuring my spine, got home, had all this anxiety. Um, I'm setting the stage for a story that basically just says that we decided that we were going to start this podcast and we want to do something great with our lives. And then fast forward three years later, bro, like I, I, I got in this space as a filmmaker. I've shot for Jake. I've shot for I, I've shot a video of Steve. I didn't shoot for Steve. I was in Miami. I was producing the yeah, show. Whatever. What do you have to do? Yeah. So I was like around all these circles. I have Steiny's phone number right now because I hit him up about like something and. It's amazing to me. Yeah, um, it's Tiny's phone number. Yeah, so we'll talk. I want to talk All about right, Tiny that, too. That, that, that's Keep going. A thing. I'm sorry. Yeah, we'll get to I, that. Yeah, we'll I get chuckled to, for a minute. We'll get to that. <laughs> but basically, I'm just setting the stage for we're fucking nobodies. We're not nobodies, but in the sense of like the internet, we're fucking nobodies. But mm -hmm. then six months ago, he's like, "Yo, we gotta start posting on TikTok." I'm like, "All right, bro, fucking do it. I don't give a shit." November 14th, we get our first viral video on TikTok. Since then, we've done 70 million views on TikTok. That's not nothing. 70 that's million. Fucking 70 million on Man. TikTok. Yeah. I like, well, I think we're like now 60, I know why the Shahidis were interested. They were like 60, 67 million. 67 million, 200,000 followers, 6.7 million likes, more than The Pivot, which is their show. Uh, who else? More than Bradley Martin, more than Ed Milet. Yeah, Ed. but fuck that. Don't 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 say okay, that. Okay, right. I know, but, uh, but that's good my, stuff. That's good yeah. resume building. The only yeah. the only reason I There's I a reason why go go to the foundation of why that worked. Why did you get Why did you get Let's not let's let's not say well more than this person more than that person more mm. than, get that fucking comparison shit out of the fucking way mm. fuck that shit yeah. who the fuck cares about fucking how many tiny followers right. who the fuck cares about how many fucking people this has this has this has what made you do that that's the, that's that's what and you need to stay that course mm. Mm. and then there's also things in play but but it might have cost you some money I'm assuming this isn't a cheap operation for you guys no. I'm assuming you guys are in about what fifty thousand dollars yeah right roughly. Yeah, probably producing this show easily. Easily. Yeah. What's the, well, how much back? More. How much back? Zero. Well, we, well zero. We just so got. We just got our first sponsor. Yeah, yeah. but zero. But we're not. I fucking love these motherfuckers for believing in you. I do. I really do. I love people that believe in startup fucking pods, and you guys aren't a startup pod. I think that you guys are great at what you do. Yeah. Um, but I do. I think that my biggest turnoff for people is when people start talking like that. Yeah. I leave fucking rooms. Yeah. When people start saying, I got only this. Um, well, I have this many more followers. Right, yeah. like, right, fuck right, right. that, bro. Mm -hmm. Who get, Your head will explode. Your head will explode. Mm -hmm. It's too much going on in the world right now. They got mm -hmm. threads coming out now. and all. I don't know what the fuck yeah. I'm yeah. doing. I saw you on that. Like, what the fuck am I? Like, there's too <laughs> right. much shit. Yeah, yeah. Focus on the core fundamentals. You know this from football. Yeah. You know what the fuck. You're a D1 athlete. You yeah. understand that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Focus on the core fundamental shit that got you to where you're fucking at right yeah, now. I love that. And what that growth was and what that build was. That's it. And that, and that's Fuck what, anybody else the following shit. Go ahead. Uh, no, no, no. That, and, that, and that's kind of like what I was getting at is like, we did this as two nobodies because of what you were saying, the core fundamental values of how we built this thing. We built it on vulnerability, transparency, real talk. But you're also a failing business right now. Absolutely. You're also a failing and business, and I'm not being a dick. No, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I'm not being a dick. No, you're right. You're a failing business because yeah. you're losing, you're, you've lost money yeah. so far, right? Yeah, I'm yeah, guessing. Yeah. I don't want to say a failing. Maybe that's too harsh. I think we're investing. Okay. I, I would take Your own it as dollars? We're investing, yeah, 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 yeah all yeah. your own dollars, yeah, yeah, yeah. all Beautiful. of it. Of course. Well, Beautiful. we were blessed to have because I was filmmaking. We had all the equipment already. He started with buy. the cameras, and then he taught me. He taught me the cameras. Yeah, yeah. I, I was college. I was all basketball. I was thought I was going overseas to go play pro college, coach Division One, and then I got into the cameras because of this podcast shit. Yeah. So now, now we can both do this exactly the way we want it, and and I can provide enough value to him on the camera side. Yeah. Is, is there is there cash flow issues ever? 
Probably. Absolutely. Yeah, of course. Uh, of course. Bro, bro of I mean, course. I mean, do you want to be, I mean, <laughs> okay. be honest? Tell, tell him where you're fucking at right now. No, you don't have to do you have no, to no, be, no, 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 no. But no, because he he's, he said it a hundred times before. Oh, okay, then great. But just so you know, like, yeah. he sleeps on the floor. Yeah. No. I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah, you bro, slept bro. in a car, bro, but I, you know. Bro, I still you, sleep on the floor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but right. I'm saying, you know, but like, this is what it takes, I feel like. That's why we're just so okay with where we're at, because mm-hmm. we understand, like, this is just, this is the fucking building point. Yeah. To, to where we're going. And we see the vision. And like in our minds, there's no way that this shit isn't going to work. We're no, going to win. That's, that's the mentality. Then that's it. Then that's your mentality. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Exactly what you just said. Then in our minds, there's no fucking chance this isn't going to work. Yeah. And that's it. That's yeah. that's your fucking. When you want to think about how many followers this person has, this person, fuck that. Yeah. yeah. There's right. no, whatever. And then, but there are like, there are like obstacles along the way. Like when is the time to start bringing in some cash flow to ask? Where I go to immediately. Where I go to immediately when I whatever it is is obviously you you don't want to give away a lot. So you want to go to people that are fucking that have your back, that aren't gonna ask for too much, that are wealthy individuals that you just fucking pitch and you say, Hey, look, mm-hmm. like I fucking I what you just told me, I want this more than ever. I don't want to go to and get gobbled up because we believe in this thing so much. Mm-hmm. We need a fucking loan. Yeah. <laughs> like you know what I mean? Yeah. We don't want to sell our souls early. I want to get back into the original point of why I went to that whole fucking. I don't want to talk about <laughs> how sorry. great, how good looking I am, and how handsome I yeah, am. Yeah, that's and how what I'm saying. This person. No, I, I, I want. I want to talk about what I was just trying to say is that we were nobodies, and then we used the internet to fucking sit down and do an interview with you. We're gonna use the internet to in a year sit down and do an interview with Mike Tyson. We're gonna use. We're gonna keep growing on TikTok. Let's go. And and what I'm saying, what I'm saying to you is that all right, like bro. You fucking you you literally just said it, bro. You're the best fucking podcast host in the world. Number one. I right? believe that. You're fucking a hundred thousand steps ahead of us. So what's your plan next? For me specifically. Be- because, bro, you have so much more connections. You have so much more resources mm-hmm. than us. Mm-hmm. We're we have nothing, but we've just used TikTok as a means of like getting in the game. Mm-hmm. You're in the game. So I feel like for you, if you being the best pod, you said I'm the fucking best. I believe that I I I have a style of interviewing. I have a style of making people comfortable in a room. Mm. I believe I have a style of not being able to fucking be a pussy in a room. Mm. I believe I can say anything to anybody at any given time. So when I say I believe the best podcast in the world, that's a bold fucking statement. Mm -hmm. I'm up in the one percent, right? In my mentality, though, I think I really do think I am fucking, you know. But I think that like. If you look at direct numbers and all that shit, right? I mean, it doesn't show that right now. I mean, our Apple shit's fucking crazy. I mean, our fucking our because I because what I, I had to buy that RSS feedback from fucking Conley, mm. fucking eighty thousand dollars by the way, Kevin, you motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> he won on that deal, but you know because Kevin owned the RSS feed, you know, basically when we yeah. partnered our first deal and they had all those subscribers on it. But Kevin was very nice enough to give that back to us. So we have all those fucking old people back. I mean, we were getting a half million downloads an episode and all that. So I needed to get that back. Yeah. 80,000, Kevin. Motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> One time wire. Yeah. It was it's like a quick combo, me and Kevin. Uh, so much yeah. Chipotle you could buy with that. <laughs> Fuck. You're right. So many yeah. sneakers I could buy, too. Like <laughs> so many things I could do with that. Yeah. yeah. So. So what's your so what's your plan? Like the yeah. point of me going into the whole story was that like we're building something, we had nothing, you have something. What's your plan? My plan is to go to Cape Cod uh, in an hour, find an Airbnb to uh, that whatever. I have somebody flying out that I'm going to spend a week with, uh, and then I am going to just hour by hour just uh, figure out you know a plan to just get back to work. Back okay. to where Bob was, you know. Okay. I'm not. I'm not fully ready to just go. Like I'm ready to go gung ho again, but like I just like you know a little more time. Yeah, I have the means to be able to just chill for a second, and uh, you know. So that's all. I'm just gonna chill for like as long as it takes until I'm ready to be like, all right, we're good again. Yeah. You know, first step was getting off the fucking drugs. That was first step. Yeah. Second step, get the mental right. Take a step back. You're not the fucking man. You know, you're just a fucking regular ass dude with fucking addiction problems and fucking ADHD and fucking all these different things and just take a step back. Yeah. All right. You're going to hear all the opinions in the world. You're going to hear you fell off. You're going to hear you're a fucking idiot. You're a loser. You're a pussy. You're a fucking bitch. You're crying about your girl. You're fucking. My next goal is live fucking literally hour by hour. I think in AA and all that shit, I don't do AA or any of that. Nothing against it. It's like one day at a time that I do like that mentality, though. One day at a time. 
Now you want to fucking obviously look at long term goals. I want to launch a really successful. I mean, cannabis. I mean, the cannabis, the gummies that we're launching is very important to me, which is that's coming soon. But they're just gonna launch when I'm ready. Nice. It's kind of on standby. Um, I think that's gonna be a really fucking big, 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 big business because, you know, I do, you know, I, I have dabbled in if the appropriate dosage, the appropriate dosage gets you to a place that's like fucking dialed the same way Adderall did. And so when we launch those gummies, you just got to fucking, you can't fuck around like me and be like, go, 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 because you'll go fucking ape shit. Yeah. But we got, you know, across from Fenway Park, that dispensary, all Arizona. Lunchbox is uh, the, the dispensary, the first one uh, in Arizona that was launched and partner in that. And uh, nice. really excited to work with those guys. And we had our issues early on, but fucking those gummies are going to be fucking madness. What's the name? Of what? The gummies. I mean, they're just a fucking ripper magoos. We slap ripper magoos on them, but like, I actually really took the time, and we took the time to really like actually like taste test them. I went through like, I mean, I ate. They told me they were blanks too, by the way, which blanks means there ain't fucking shit in them. Yeah. I was like, fucking, all right, I'll eat these blanks, and I'm like, bro, these ain't blanks. Like, oh fuck, we mixed up the order. <laughs> like, oh shit. So like, fuck. you know, I was like, there's one more nine one one call. Went quick, quick nine one one call to the hospital. Yeah, and that was it. But uh, yeah, really excited about the gummy shit coming out, and then. Um, also, like, you know, this Family for Life agency I'm not really involved with, mm -hmm. but still. Um, Scott Branch, who's the founder of this company, who's done a lot for me in my life, mm -hmm. um, has started a sports agency, and I want to help as much as I can with that. And we're also involved in another sports agency as well and a lot of different stuff behind the scenes um, that we're doing right now. But the gummies is the main thing I'm really passionate about. But I think, I think you can... Cut me off at any time, too, because I talk a lot. No, no, I think I think that's all great. But I, I was more so getting at, like, not, like, really so much your business ventures. I was just thinking, bro, like, you can have a fucking... Uh, that level of podcast again. I mean, that... Yeah, we're re ready to go. I mean, I took yeah. it... I took it... I mean, I think you look at it like I have an exclusive deal with Rumble pretty yeah. much right now, so I can't really... I think the reach it's with YouTube yeah, yeah. could be, you know, crazy yeah. if I went on there. But I'm, I, I, I chose Rumble because... Of what happened to Steve and all that stuff, and I met Chris, the CEO, and I believed in his vision, and it's it's the same kind of thing as partnering up with them. I wanted to take them a little bit, like they're very this way. Let's balance them out a little bit, yeah. Yeah. and uh, but the reach is definitely harder. So it looks like the numbers are terrible, but go look at Apple. I mean, I'll print out all our stuff, and our audio listens are amazing. You yeah. know? So we're still there. I mean, it's just about. I wanted to make it more private. I've interviewed every celebrity in the world, dude. I've interviewed everybody possible you can imagine. I've sat down with the president of the United States, bro. Like that's pretty badass shit. Can we speak? Can we speak a little bit about about that? About like interviewing big guests? Yeah, yeah. I mean, how, bro, I'm how here you, for it. How do you approach it? What, what, Are you what, nervous yeah. as fuck beforehand? I was nervous, bro. I was outside. I was outside preparing, warming up the same yeah. way I used to warm up in football. I had my my literally football playlist back in the day, just yeah. fucking getting right. I prayed, you yeah. know, Lord, make me, you know, hope guide my speech, you know, like whatever gets you there. I was never nervous. I was never really nervous at all. I think that like we had, there were times where like me and Kyle partied the night before, like little Dirk, like little Dirk was became a good buddy of mine. Love little Dirk. Uh, the night before that, we had gone out all night, me and Kyle and the boys, and just got fucking wild. And so if you watch that interview that we did with, uh, I mean, I hate to promote their show when I'm not involved anymore, but uh, yeah. if you watch that little Dirk episode, uh, we were, me and Kyle were like at the point where like, fuck, we might have to cancel on little yeah. Dirk. We're so fucking fucked up right now. Yeah. Um, and even like, you know, smoking weed with Steve before interviewing the president of the United States. You know, really? Yeah. Me and Steve smoked weed before in the, in the Sprinter van and, uh, you know, which may seem disrespectful. I guess, but like at the same time, we just like we're like, dude. I mean, this is just our vibe. Yeah. Like, I'm just gonna smoke weed, and sometimes <laughs> cannabis and shit relaxes me. And Tyson interview, I had a full blown panic attack, but I couldn't get up because it was Mike Tyson. <laughs> so that yeah, whole, yeah that yeah. whole that whole interview, I was just having a panic attack. You could tell. I wow. was just yeah, geeking out. I was so nervous. Time. I was like, whatever. I was fucking with Mike, and he was looking at me weird. And I'm like, Mike is the, <laughs> Mike is the greatest guy in the world. But at the same time, I was like, yeah, it's, he'll never do anything, right? Then you see his airplane just beat the shit out of that fucking kid in the airplane, which is fucking awesome because that kid fucking deserved to get smoked in the fucking face. And, uh, yeah, that was basically it. But my, me and Tyson got high. Tyson was very – everybody was been very generous about sharing weed. Snoop Snoop shared his weed. I just sat down with Matt Barnes. Yeah. Matt, Matt didn't give me – Matt didn't let me hit the blunt during the interview because somebody had pink eye in the house. Okay. That's why. So it was actually justified. Rick Ross didn't let me smoke his shit. But Rick also told me Damn, to come you've down. you've interviewed all these fucking people, huh? I mean, Rick Ross, Mike Tyson, Snoop Dogg, Post Malone, President of the United States, Trump, not at the time, but former, um, fucking Dirk, fucking guy that killed Bin Laden, which is my most, I mean, the Navy SEAL guys are my favorite. Yeah. 
That, that was, was your favorite episode? I mean, it always is. I mean, yeah, dude, that was think, sick. Think that, about this. That one was sick. Yeah. You sit down next to somebody and you tell your background or whatever, right? And you're sitting in a bar and somebody doesn't know you. Mm-hmm. You're sitting down, you say background. Somebody doesn't know you. Me too, right? We sit down, okay? Imagine being able to look over to a girl and they say, hey, uh, so what do you do for a living? I fucking killed Osama bin Laden. <laughs> is there anything fucking cooler than that on the planet? No. I don't not. think you can find a cooler fucking story than that. And that's why I spent, you know, when I first met Rob O'Neill and Dakota Meyer, Dakota uh, had a Medal of Honor recipient. He was ambushed by a group of uh, Taliban in this small city. I think there was, and I don't want to misquote the story, but there was like eight or 12 of the guys, and they were ambushed, and the first like group of them went in and just were fucked. And so they were told to stand back. But those were their, that, that was his guys yeah. in there. And again, I want to tell the story right. I don't know if I am completely, but it's along the lines of this. And Dakota called in once to his superiors. We're like, hey, can we go in? And they're like, no, stand down. Can we go in? No. Fuck. And they're just, they're ambushed. The Taliban just trapped them. And they lost a lot of their guys. And on the fifth attempt, when he called his superiors, said, can we go in? They said, no. Dakota was like, fuck that. Overrode his fucking guys and went in with machine guns fucking hitting him, fucking whatever. I asked him what his closest combat was. It was like me to here, like hand to hand. Like, that's real shit. That's when you know you're a fucking dog. Not this pussy ass podcast shit. <laughs> yeah. You know? That's a different world. That's a different world that takes balls. You think you'd ever go to the military? No. I was upset. I, I mean, bro, my life could have went any which way. It's just, bro, I was just fucking playing football. You know, mm-hmm. bro, I, I grew up on uh, the Army Navy game, and m- my dad was friends with the lacrosse coach at Navy. So, like, like it was like almost a thing. Like, I could have, like, I my mo- my parents wanted me to go to Annapolis, but I just wanted, to, like, I, when I was thirteen years old, like the same way I fucking look and am now, bro, I was always getting bitches. You know, so like I was never gonna go to Annapolis. But I like that. I love. I, I already knew that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I knew that. Where are you at? <laughs> well, well, let, me, uh, let me ask this: We're bi- look, we're we're uh, bitches, right? right? You know, I I never referred to them as bitches until uh, until recently. Mm. But uh, do you think the bitches had anything to do with? Do you think they held you back at all, or did they they just? I mean, everybody's got to like you know, fuck the girl here and there. That was that ever a distraction for you? No, I, I think, as I host this podcast. <laughs> no, I th- you know the good the good news is this, bro. Like the. I, I got it out fucking early. Like, if I'm talking 14, 15, 16 years old. Like, Wolf of Wall Street. Like, bro, we grew up in Long Island. Like, we were going to fucking ragers. 2,000 <clears> people. Like, I always, like, it's crazy to me. Like, I, I, I like partying. I love partying, actually. But, like, when I party now, like, it's not, like, Live isn't wouldn't be enough for me because it's like all right I'm gonna go to live and stand on this table like that's not I would I would like to go to like an Ibiza or some shit like that you know like I, I would need my experience to be better because I was already doing live shit without spending a hundred thousand dollars when I was younger mm-hmm. um, so for me I, I was I was also very blessed and humbled by God because bro like there was a time in my life where I was the man 13 14 15 16 years old. And then fuck that camera. And then 17 years old, um, I got fat. And then that's what made me go to junior college, mm-hmm. which is like, bro, bottom of the barrel. Like I was one of like two white kids on a fucking football team playing mm-hmm. with people from Louisiana and Baltimore yeah. and this and that, you know, whatever. Long story short, um, no, I, I don't I don't think women has has affected. What's me. your body count? Um, bro, it's be, be, be Believe it or not, like it's really not even that high. Like I, I would probably, I mean, fuck it, sure, why not? I mean, could this come back? Yeah, it probably could come why, back. Why? Why could it come back? What? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm in, I'm in, I'm, I'm in the. Let's go call, call it somewhere around. Let's call it somewhere. Yeah, around. yeah, yeah. Nice, that's a good number. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 What's, what's your body count? Wife, so. It's like that's a Rick Ross. <laughs> what's your body count? It's double <laughs> digits. What about you, huh? What's Bob Mary's body count? I never. I never slept alone. I don't think I ever really have slept alone. I don't like to sleep alone, so my body count's pretty high. There you go. And I just got my full testing back for everything, top to bottom, and somehow we fucking made it out. <laughs> we are that, good, motherfucker. That's a fucking lie. We are fucking that's good. A no, fucking I swear to God. No, that was my craziest thing. When I went into that thing, they gave me all the blood tests. They're like, do you want us to test you for all those syphilis, fucking gonorrhea, all that shit? I'm like, fuck yeah, now I do. <laughs> fuck it, yeah. And they, bro, I came back clean. He's gonna came... get back this clip, send it to his ex. Come on, come on, <laughs> no, I'm good no, to no, go. No. Nah, she might be flying out here right now, but we're good. Okay, oh, yeah. that's good. Fuck with you. I don't know. I mean, she's hot as shit. Yeah, she's hot. Yeah. She fucked my head up. Arts and then arts and let's speak about that. Yeah, because that's a good topic. 
Well, not not her. Are we able we, to in this podcast? Are we able to take a piss next door? Yeah, you can. I mean, is it like can we take a quick go, commercial yeah, break? Go piss, Let's yeah. Do like it. this do would be a great. More. Let's roll com- roll commercial. Yeah, I think. You can- You have to be crazy enough to think that it's possible. Why would I settle for a life that I deserve so much more than? I need to relinquish the power and give it to God and and, and let the flowers really, really grow, really, really blossom. Overnight success happens five years ago. Boom, something clicks and now everyone's like, yo, he blew up overnight. You have to make a habit of shooting for the stars in life. You have to believe it's possible. Initially, I was thinking about the journey as where you are physically, but as time went on, the journey is much more than that. This is about the mental and spiritual journey through life. We are all faced with adversity and have to really dig deep to get through the tough times and overcome them. We all have a journey in this thing we call life. The question is, what's yours? What you call an icon living? Start a record label, Miss Fish just did it. <laughs> Nylon, couple five minutes. Whoa, we are too hot in the business. What's going on, guys? We are very proud to announce the Journey Podcast is officially sponsored by Evermore Alkaline Water. I'm about to clean them in the kitchen. The boys yeah. are back. Um, boys intermission? Are, Evermore it's, intermission? Um, hope you guys like that. You just got the, uh, the okay to talk about that story? Uh, for what story? Uh, you said the uh, controversial story. You said you had to send it. Oh text. no no no! Just uh, before you got to go into like it's funny mediation. So uh, before you go into like uh, you know the things you try and mediate things in the right way. Gotcha. And oh, so uh, really quick, I want to turn. The, oh yeah. You, I don't think that'll affect it. I don't think it'll affect it. A little bit. Steve, the uh, the AC, the fan. I don't know. Oh, it's fuck fine. It. Yeah, fuck yeah, it. Good, yeah, fuck. good. Um. No 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 no. No, you're, you're good. good. Yeah, it takes a second to turn off. Yeah, whatever. I think it doesn't matter. I yeah. think it's still going to be good enough. I All think right. hopefully our voices are powerful enough to override the air conditioning system. I agree. Let's go. Um, so you you were diving. I mean, if if we don't have the so you were talking about female, female what? How the body count thing again? No, 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 no. no, 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 no. The, the, uh, I guess we could start off with women, right? Because uh, people oh, are going to be here. For no, that. don't bring me here. No, 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 don't bring me this fucking <laughs> thing. I can't. No, 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 no. I'm back to therapy. <laughs> Send me back. I'm going back. They put me in the fucking loony bin again. Don't you fucking dare. Nah, I'm not even I'll talking. tell you what. You know what? I went ape shit on the internet. How many story views I had on one story when I went ape shit, ape shit? One million story views on one fucking thing. Jesus. That's why that car crash thing is like funny. Like people drive by, you know, somebody's going out of crazy, like, you know, losing their mind. You don't want to look at the dead body, but you still peek at it. That's the fucking... But then I'm like, all right, now I look like an idiot. I look like a little pussy bitch who worried about a fucking piece of pussy. That's my shit. I'm high as hell right now. Good job, boys. Let's fucking go. <laughs> <laughs> Cousin Bob is high. All right, so all right, so the, I want to keep it more fun. I, I don't want to dive... like. It, let's make it fun. What? Yeah. Now, and high I meant by uh, smoking marijuana, which cannabis helps me in certain ways. Yes, yeah, it does. You're dialed. You Not, said that earlier in the app. AC stopped. The vibe is now different. It is different. We're good. All right, what's all right? So there was a point in your life where you were fucking nothing, no money, this that, sleeping in the car, right? We might be Um, back to that soon if we don't get our shit together. (laughs) So you, you, so you said that I asked you your body count, and you said you don't like sleeping alone, so it's fucking high. Now, tell me about the process of getting bitches before you had money versus after having money. Like, did you did you also get bitches before you had money? I mean, I'm a great salesman. So, you know, I believe that one of my strengths is sales. And I think that anytime you're pursuing a woman, I think you're selling yourself. Mm. I think I'm pretty good at that. So there was never an issue. Really? No. No. So you think it's bullshit if, if that's like a limiting belief? Like they, every, like, oh. every situation is different and has a different variable. Yeah. Mm. My situation was just, I believe, but I also got fucked with. I just got to, you know, I don't know, man. I mean, I, not sleeping alone. I mean, what single fucking dude likes to fucking sleep alone and not have like a fucking and you refer to them once in a while as bitches like why like have a lady or a chick <laughs> trying to make me look bad <laughs> oh i can do that very well i can do that very well you know uh no i, I you've been you've been the fucking man yeah. we actually had to talk about women too about how we respect them 
Yes. I respect women. I really do. <laughs> Just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds great. <laughs> we did have a talk. Yeah, that's it. So, so, uh, so as women, I'm so high right now, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> so let's just keep fucking going. Who, who's the? Uh, c- can you say a name of who's? The- I'll say whatever the fuck anybody wants. Who's, to say. who's the big? Who's the biggest influencer woman you've been with? Oh, you did ask me one question that I really can't fucking reveal. <laughs> um, man, that's a great question. Or can you say the, the number of followers that they have? No, 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 no. Say the fucking name. I said my body oh, count. Fuck, it's a terrible fuck. Fucking now idea. you're, now you're, man. Oh, man. I'll give you if you, you guys are this is this is the only motherfucking thing that I don't breach trust on. All right, so then here. If, if how about you say it, you can have some days I'll to think blur, about I'll it. I'll blurt it out. Why don't we revert back to it in a little bit because okay. I need to think about it because there's been so many. Wow. That's right. that's equally as bad to say, I feel like if you're trying to get a girl. We back. could do the, the No, beep, I'm, not, I'm trying to get a girl and we'll, back. Cover no. your, and we'll cover your mouth so they can't even read Listen, your lips. If we're either gonna do this one of two ways. Either I'm gonna say who it is or we're not. Or we're not. Okay. That's a fucking whatever. Fair. Anyway. If it comes to mind. But I think that it's, it's, the initials are TS. Whoa. All right. So I I, had one come to mind immediately. All right. Well, here's the deal. Let's leave it there. Wow. You know Okay. Let's leave it there. You know what I'm talking about? All right. So, so here's the deal. (laughs) Uh, Okay. So now tell me, normal, because you've been around celebrities and influencer women. (laughs) Celebrities, influencer women. No, I always had one girl by my side because the risk, it reduced risk. So... You know, with with if I'm dating a fucking girl and I know she's by my my side, I have one chick that fucks with me. She just rolls by my side. She does her thing. I, I push her. She pushes me. You know, a real relationship. I felt that was way more effective and would reduce risk rather than going out and trying to fuck thirty girls in the fucking thirty days. Or fucking Fair. whatever the fuck it is, right? Mm. So that was a, just a. I've always had a girl by my side that I f- find and I trust. Right. You know, and that's important to me because think about it. I mean, it's a dangerous time to like live in now with just shit and like, you know, you got to be tight. You got to keep your shit tight. There's a, this world moves fast. And before you know it, blink, you could just be dropped out of nowhere. So just fucking. That's why I don't like, I don't know. I don't like, I don't like staying at places for a long period of time either sometimes. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? What was it about your ex that you liked? We, oh man, damn, bro! You can't you can't put me back into that therapy. All right, so then all right, let's let's yeah. uh, let's switch gears. It's like Fuck trigger word. Nah, I'm Screw, just kidding. Yeah. Fuck talk, with talk. you. You know what's crazy though? Well, more people like I'll do my clips and they'll hit me, like you know my reels and shit. Just like fucking takes me five minutes. Joel and uh, a shotgun formation, and Rogers on the right side and Johnson on the far left. He takes a snap, fires complete, knocked out of bounds by Richard Sherman. If you're just joining us here on Fox, you know like we can do that shit, right? And we know every fucking time it's going to fucking hit millions of fucking views. <laughs> right? Like, I'll never, yeah. ever not go viral for a voice yeah. over. Right. Back to bitches. <laughs> oh, that's what they are now. No. I'm saying back to... I, I got... Good, I got respectful women. I'm trying to get... I'm, I'm just to... high, man. That pen where we smoked just yeah, got yeah. me to another level. This is, like Tyson, this is like the Tyson episode. It really feels like it. <laughs> Like, holy shit, guys. And by the way, I mean, everybody, now this is where people will dog on me. They'll be like, Bob, you're in therapy, rehab, like, whatever. Oh. Cannabis has helped me. You're good. Like, yeah. incredibly. We have these gummies that are launching. They're fucking going to be massive, bro. I'm telling you. It's my real fucking big baby that I'm launching. Mm. And we're not stopping. Mm. It's going to be fucking amazing. I, I've sat there and fucking me, out of everybody that's had panic attacks and call. I have the world motherfucking record of 911 calls when you're having a panic attack. <laughs> you know how hard that is to do? You call 911 fucking like 15 times in like three weeks? Do that's when just, you know you fucked up. Do they start knowing you by the first name? No, because I would always just, and, and, and I would always call. So this is a funny story. Yeah. All right, so I'm Scottsdale, Arizona. I'm with my former girl. And I don't, listen, I don't blame her for fucking leaving. I don't blame her because I'm like fucking wild. But I also just don't fuck with me ever again because you see what I do. Um, yeah, I forgot what I was saying. You're you, talking about a crazy Arizona. story. Oh, Arizona, yeah. So I call. I, I have this. I smoke this fucking weed. I'm all baked as shit. I walk in. My girl looks at me. She's like, fuck, it's happening. Like Bob's having a meltdown. So I'm like, she knows that. I'm pacing around the motherfucking room, like tweaking out. Like, like dude, am I dying? Am I not dying? I'm just having a full-blown panic attack. So, like, here's the deal. It depends the state you're in, the city you're in. Like, if I'm in L.A., I'm less likely to call 911 because motherfucking shit's going down in L.A. Right, right, right. Right? If I'm in, like, fucking Johnsonville fucking fuckface Missouri, you bet your ass I'm calling 911. 
That's our taxpayer dollars. I'm making sure I'm not dying. All right? <laughs> so I just kind of gauge it. Yeah. But I did have a time in Scottsdale, Arizona, where I did call 911 at like 3 in the afternoon. And uh, so usually what happens is the firefighters come in and the ambulance people come in and they know me. Every time. And they're fans. Or maybe fucking they hate me. Right. <laughs> but I got to do this awkward interaction with them and be like, dude, listen, I, fuck, I'm just I'm trying to keep it safe. Like, I just want to make sure I'm not dying. So then they put this, like, EKG on you. Yeah. They put all this shit on you, make sure you're not dying. And there was actually one time in Scottsdale where they were like, yeah, we want to bring you in. And so the fact of having them around really helped my brain, like, calm down. So they brought me in, and they're like, yeah, you got to go on the stretcher. Now, this is when I'm having, like, an internet meltdown with millions of people watching. And I'm like, bro, I ain't going on no motherfucking stretcher. <laughs> He's like... You have to. So we had like a three-minute negotiation on the stretcher. And what I said is I'll walk in the ambulance, I'll lay in the stretcher, and I will fucking... And by the way, this is just for me eating too many of our weed gummies that we're dropping. Mm -hmm. This is how high it gets you. <laughs> <laughs> so I fucking am in the ambulance. It's like some dude like taking a picture of the experience. Like fucking with a guy. Not throwing him on the bus. He was a man. Yeah. Thanks for saving my life, bro. <laughs> And we get there, and then we pull up to the hospital. And now I'm in a stretcher. In my mind, everywhere I go, if I go from point A to point B, I know that somebody will maybe potentially know me, recognize me, or fuck with me, or not fuck with me. Mm. So I can't be rolling in in a stretcher <laughs> to the hospital. So I fucking am like bargaining this guy. I'm like, bro, I'm not getting, I'm, you're not wheeling me out in a stretcher. He's like, listen to me. We came. Your heart rate's high, all this shit. Like, we, you're not moving out of the stretcher. This guy was like saving my life. Mm. Right? And I'm like, bro, I just, like, I can't do it. Long story short, he's like, all right, they go back and forth because they know what the fuck, like. I'm like, I just can't. Like, I'm like, I can't be just that rare chance that somebody takes a picture and I'm going to stretch her rolling in. Yeah. That's a badass look, right? So we, we solved it. I, I met him in the middle and he still won in the negotiation. The white towel was draped over me <laughs> as I went in to Scottsdale, Arizona. So I'm getting peddled in like a fucking dead body. Just sitting there, bro. And the motherfucker, this is how I know he's fucking with me. He parks me because he's like, yeah, I think I'm going right to a room. <laughs> he fucking sits me in the lobby for like 45 minutes with a white towel on me just chilling. <laughs> What's going and through your like, mind? Are you freaking out more I'm now? just like, bro, I need to change. Yeah. <laughs> like, I need to change my shit. Oh, and so long story short, yeah. we go in, like, change my life. And that yeah. was before the whole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was like all leading up to that fucking therapy okay. shit and all that. Yeah. And so, yeah, that's the story. It was just hilarious. I told it probably poorly, but it's a podcast. You can talk for hours. The listening rate really doesn't matter. Yeah, no, that was that was great. <laughs> All right, so bro, so then, so then, to to the panic attack, right? Like, I want to, I want to speak solely about that. What was your first panic? I just don't want to have one now. That's my problem. Okay, all right. So we then do maybe, yeah, maybe yeah, yeah, don't speak. You want no, to get away from that? No, it could be a viral moment if we have a panic attack alive. Yeah. Fuck. So should we go there? I mean, bro, fuck it. You know what I'm saying? Maybe. <laughs> no, you're not gonna, bro. This is the most. Bro, don't be a pussy. Let's I've talk ever. about panic attacks. Yeah. No. Let's yeah, talk panic about panic attacks. Well, actually, we just did talk about panic attacks. I, is, I was in a what? fucking back of the ambulance with a fucking white rope on my fucking or whatever it was. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Move on to something else. No All more right. panic attacks. All right. Let's shit. talk. Let's talk Steiny. Zirat. Let's talk Steiny. Steiny is Zirat. What do you want to know? I want to know. This fucking kid. I keep hearing his name. Yeah, because I want to know, because earlier he said, I have Steiny's number. You laughed. Why is that a funny thing to you to fa to, to, for the fact that someone is like a household name that someone has Steiny's number now, that, that it's a, a thing? Steiny owes me his entire life. Uh, he needs to be respectful no matter what or where you came from. Uh, it doesn't matter. You got to remember the guys that changed your life, and uh, you got to always stand by their side. That's all I'll say. No further questions, Your Honor. Respect. I like it. I, like oh, I love Steiny. Steiny's a good dude, man. He's 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 a fucking shark. He, but he's like a street hustler. He's like a he, his, his dad's the best. When I first hired Steiny, he walked in at goal. I've told the story a thousand times. He walks in and he's just like a little pussy. He's like, hey, how you doing? <laughs> I need a fucking job. I'm like, who the fuck is this kid? He's like a smaller kid. He's like five foot. I don't know what you are, Steiny. What are you? Five foot six, something like that. And so he was just the biggest pussy but he was smart and his, his dad was the best criminal defense attorney in the world that helped yeah. um and so steiny was hired and then he had to spend 24 hours a day with me seven days a week no sleep my schedule if you work for me like you don't fucking you miss a call for me at 3 a.m 
Peace. Yeah. You're out. Mm -hmm. Can you tell the story that uh, you first could trust Steiny? I know it, but I want oh, you to. I mean, well, I, I can. The, the, the first one in 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 L.A. at 3 a.m. when when you told him to go get something, and he did it. Oh, that was his first mission. His first mission was yeah, ever to get for Steiny's me was mission. was to get me two Adderall. So I met him, and I had a fucking uh, meeting with him for five ten minutes, and I was just like, I just needed somebody, right? And he was like, little, he was like, I ran an underground poker game. I did, I'm like, perfect, everything like that you're in. Let's go, come for a fucking ride. And uh, yeah, what was that question again? Well, what was Steiny's first mission for you? Where you get Adderall? Like he's the guy. Get Adderall. It was three a.m. So I met him at like eight thirty that night. I texted him at three a.m. I said, "Bring me two Adderall right now. Find a way to bring me two Adderall. Like I'm, I'm up. I'm working." Um, and he fucking got it done. And then I was just like, "Let's go!" Like the next morning, like it was like you just stay here. You don't even get your clothes. You don't even get your shit. Like you're just you're. You, let's go. Like you just got me that done at two in the morning. Like just easily, and then. We just went. The thing with Steiny is Steiny was literally a twenty four seven, seven days a week, every day a week, scrubbing floors, fucking bitch ass work, like fucking military mode. I had that motherfucker in, bro. Like I run a tough ass camp. Yeah, it's reckless as fuck. Cause if you take care of me, like you gotta understand these. This guy, I have my right hand man. that's just taking care of me. So like, he's got to be on point, and that's why I have his back, and that's why he did take care of me. So he's good. Steiny's good. I love Steiny. So how how did you feel? When uh, they go to Abu Dhabi during COVID yeah. UFC event, you go there, eighteen hour flight, you have a panic attack, and you say, "Fuck nah, this!" I, I don't know what it was. was Semi, yeah. whatever. I need to get the fuck out of here. Mm -hmm. Steiny asks if he can stay. Steve, uh, you know, calls you, can, or did did Steve call you saying, "Can I? Can I? Basically, can I? Can I have Steiny?" Me and Steiny got in a screaming match on the phone. Talk about that. I was screaming at him about something. I forget. I think it was just the way, like you know, because when I when you're on my team. I always like people to have like a stick to the same image, the same like, you know, I don't want to be sitting there like just chilling like this, having a Bud Light. And I don't want my guy with bottle service signs flying around and fucking. But that's why I always gave Brett, who is the fuck. Brett Sadat is an unbelievable assistant. Him was. And I'm going to that kid I owe my life to because he was with me during very dark days. And and I took it. I didn't pay him for one year. So the deal was basically I said, you work for me 365 days. I'm not paying you a penny. You'll learn the business, but I'll give you $100,000 on day 365. And so he fucking stuck it out, worked his fucking ass off, didn't miss a call, protected my relationships, monitored my behavior, like worked harder than anyone I've ever seen in my life and is like the hardest working guy ever. Um, and that was that. And then on day 365 came. And obviously Bob busting balls, being like, you know, knowing that fucking like, I got to fucking pay this kid 100 fucking <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> You gotta wire him a hundred fucking grand. And so I'm like, by the way, I'm like, I do have to deduct some days, you know. I mean, the uh, you did you did get fucked up in Scottsdale. Right. right, <laughs> right, right. Like, so like we gotta eliminate seven. So you're on yeah. day like three fifty five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How many wait, how many days in a year? Three sixty five. Three sixty five. So you're like, yeah, yeah, it's good. You're back down to day seven. And I'd like fuck with him a little bit. Yeah. And then uh, you know, just basically dropped two fifty thousand dollar wires in his account and wow. uh paid him for the year. Wow. Wow. Yep. And then uh the Steiny shit, and then also, yeah, the Steiny. You want Steiny shit? I, I want to hear you talk about like like that transfer where he became Steve's assistant, and you kind of left Abu Dhabi. And, and I was like this: I brought over, God damn, Dana. When Dana called me out in front of seventy million people, or whatever called it was, you a pussy, called right? me a pussy. But you said Dana's you said the fucking man because I call him up and I'm like, "What are you doing, bro? You can't do this to me." He's like, "You're a fucking pussy, Bob. Stop being a pussy." Like our relationship is like so. Like Dana and I have a because we both are kind of. Cutthroat from the same background. And you know how it's Boston loyalty boys. Like, fuck these New York guys. They'll never get it. Yeah. You know what I mean? But <laughs> I'm not from I don't Boston. Get Boston. Oh, you have the hat on. Yeah, I'm a Mets fan. Oh, okay. This is weird. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> this is we did this on purpose, but I'm New York. I'm I don't, New York. I don't know but I get we're all the same. We're all yeah, the same. Yeah, yeah. All right, cool. Northeast, Northeast. We ain't all the same. Boston guys. Yeah. Sh we ain't all, right. all the same. That's not that's not that's never the case. Fair enough. So Stani, uh, <laughs> what's going on? Let's keep going. I like this. I'm high. I'm in the perfect state of high right now. Let's go. Here, I'm gonna change your card. You could, you could. Oh shit, we're still going. Yeah. Wow, this could be a long ass podcast. We're on hour two. What are you doing? I'm changing a card. You continue the interview. Okay. <sighs> talk about fucking. Uh, talk no, about no, 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 no. Just let the moment live. Okay. Yep. Just let the fucking moment live. That's what you do. You let the fucking moment live. You have a fucking drink. <laughs> That's what you do. Chill the fuck out. Chill. I'm sure. welcome back. You sure? I don't think we do. Put it up a little bit. All right, we're back. 
Bobby boy. All right, so my brother, my brothers, I love you guys. This is amazing hospitality. I fucking love you. you the too, sneaker brother. shit. You guys are. Hey, what's your sneaker company? La Tienda. La Tienda in, in Malden. Yeah. I'll tell you what. You guys are some of the coolest fucking dudes I met, and, and been very hospitable. I really appreciate you. Thank you. Bro. I really, really fucking appreciate you, man. I appreciate you guys. Brother, come on. I just appreciate you, and I appreciate everybody here. You know, taking their time to fucking try and make a great piece of content. I think that's what's really important is our goal is no matter how big or small the project is, it doesn't matter. Let's fucking make it the best possible fucking outcome we can. Love that. That's my mentality. Let's Beautiful. fucking go. All right, let's let's be let's speak. I want to speak a little bit about um Money Buys Happiness. Go, oh, those fucks. Yeah, you go on they their fucked me. You go on their podcast. They cut their f- go ahead. Yeah. You go you go on their podcast. There's a there's a clip of Bob. Uh he's speaking about you were speaking about I'm convinced it was Shahidi. You convinced it was Shahidi. Yeah, I'm that convinced it was a little Shahidi move behind the scenes. So there's a clip of you saying <laughs> that you used to do cocaine, you don't do it anymore, or something like that. And, yeah, then, no. and then and then the next second it was cut in a way where you go, I'm back on it. They started the episode with a 30 second trailer. By the way, money buys happiness. I'm talking to you. Okay. I understand this. You don't understand who I know. Okay? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, so here, here's the deal. Uh basically they put on the the the, the start, the trailer, the episode, they put on that. Edited it so it looked like I had relapsed on cocaine. That is not the issue. That was seven years ago. Was there a fucking toot ski or maybe one or two along the way? Maybe. But it was been like probably three times in the last seven years. Mm -hmm. You don't touch that shit now. You can't do cocaine. It's got fentanyl in it. You're going to die. You're a fucking idiot. Stop doing cocaine. Mm. But how do you feel about those guys for like what, like how they like kind of cut it? And like, how do you feel about? Oh, yeah, I didn't like that. That's just like, bro, come on now. Have my back. Have they responded since you said no, that that's not no cool? Respond. There's no need to respond. They didn't yeah. say anything about yeah, whatever it. Whatever they say, I won't respond. Let me, they were good guys. Yeah. Okay. They were good guys. They just kind of fucking, they made some fucking, it's a shitty edit. Yeah. Like, don't do that to me. When I'm coming to you at my weakest day, I, I was my lowest day, man. Yeah. They pulled me out of the bedroom. John said, yeah, we're doing a podcast. I was like, what? Like, no, I don't want, but I'm like a guy, you know, so we did it. We sat down. I just didn't like the edit at the beginning. I'm not yeah. like, I'm not mad at anybody. I don't right, give right, a right. fuck, bro. Like, yeah, I don't yeah. care because mm-hmm. nothing, but like, come on, <laughs> bro. Don't, it wasn't, I probably wasn't even them. Like, it was probably what was behind the scenes clicking that button. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And know? then what do, you, what do you feel about like how the media has portrayed you in general? Like, how do you feel about like the media? And- I mean, the Covington shit was bullshit. Like Covington thing was fucking ridiculous. Colby Covington? Yeah, the Colby. Yeah, yeah. Jorge yeah. Masvidal. Yeah. How you yeah, said that, that and- incident was ridiculous. Like that was crazy. Like. I've never seen a lie carried so heavily on the internet that's like so doesn't even make sense. Can you take us through that night? I mean, quick. I don't even want to because it's so like long. We're just there at Poppy Steak and sh- shit happens. Two fighters fucking cross paths and one of them just was, I don't know, bro. It was just like it was a fight. But like Kyle, obviously, for views and clicks, fucked me by being like, Bob set up the whole operation. Like, I'm yeah. like, remember me going back to like, just don't fuck with me. Let me do my job. That, that's all I wanted. And that was the biggest fuck you to me. And that was like so disrespect because what it did is it made my, like, bro, every Google search is about this shit. And it's like, that sucks because like I really treat my guests or my people that come in, as you guys can tell, hopefully, like family. And I would hope that the same fucking way back. That's the way I look at it. You treat it like family. You have a very close circle. But you eliminate a lot of people along the way if you're trying to do good work. And you eliminate the weak that don't have the same mentality you have. Yeah. Plain and simple. Mm. And you do it in the most polite way. You still check in because you're a good guy. But you have to eliminate the fucking weak. And you got to just fucking go motherfucking ape shit. Love it. All right. Yeah. Um, my right last there. question to you. Um, yes. You're the, uh, you're, the mayor is ready. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Last question. John from the Washington Post. Go ahead. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, so you, you spoke about how uh, a, a, a huge piece of advice in your life was from your father. And he said, uh, what's, the next, what's the next big thing? Best thing. Best thing. Best Great thing. job. That's a fucking good question. My dad always gave me the best advice ever. You're going to fuck up a lot, Bob. We've seen you fuck up a lot. You keep fucking up. You do fuck up here and there. Great here. Great there. Whatever. Stop. Breathe. What's the next best thing you could do for your life? That's it. That was his advice. Is that where you're at right now? Maybe not because of what's flying in. You ever figure out who TS was yet? I mean, I have an idea. Do you? All right. I, I only know. I'm, I mean, you know, I don't talk about my shit. I, don't, I keep my stuff very, very, very low key. 
Could be anybody. Tatiana Sanchez. That, that might be a name, right? <laughs> yeah. Leave it on that. <laughs> we'll fucking leave it on that. Thank you guys so much for watching the Journey Podcast. This episode's been absolutely fucking amazing. Bob is high as shit right now. Uh, hopefully we did a good enough job. Let us know in the comments if we did a good enough job. Um, Anything yeah. to send us home, Bob? No. We're all good. This is a good job. We're all good. Mission accomplished. Good Thank stuff. you, Bob. Shout out Evermore. Shout out La Tienda. The water was good. I can consume more of it. There you go. Cut. Cheers.